Today we're going to be continuing our series on Node.js. Uh, last week we went over how to create the server itself. Uh, this time we're going to be incorporating routes using Express and EJS and creating some templates. Let's get started. Welcome back to a new episode of DevDrawer. Today we're going to be going over how to create templates and using the Express to create routes inside of Node.js. Okay, so let's recreate this in a way that's a little bit easier to watch. Um, and I'll, I'll spin up the server whenever we kind of get it sort of created. Okay, so let's go ahead and blow what we've done because that was just for testing purposes. First thing I want to do is create a constant variable called hostname, and this is going to be equal to 127001. And then I want to do a const port, and this is going to be equal to 8081. Um, actually, we don't need this this way, um, but we can also do process.env.port or 8081 so it hits the environment variable first if you have it if not then it's just going to default to our 8081 uh, let's do const express and we're going to require express so let's do require express and this is going to be pulling it from the node modules um, let's do const routes equals require and this is going q u i r e this is going to be pointing to our routes folder so let's go ahead and point that to our routes um, because all of our routes are going to be named inside of there the server file is basically just setting it up you don't have to put it inside of a routes folder um, i just find that it's easier to kind of keep the code structured a little bit um, and then we're going to do constant app equals express because we're going to be using express to pretty much build the entire system okay uh, so since we have the express app defined let's go ahead and set where our views are going to be and this is going to be pointing to the view folder so let's do path dot join dir name views so this views uh, variable should now be pointing to this view so it'll uh, know we kind of know which file we're looking for whenever we go to point it out okay um, right now we're not doing anything with CSS so let's just keep that simple let's do app dot set uh, and we're gonna set our view engine to EJS and EJS is, uh, like I said, it's a, it's a templating system for JavaScript. Um, and you'll, you'll see what I mean by that whenever I start building out the actual pages and the views. Okay, so now let's do app.use. And we want our routes to use the routes variable. That's going to be pulling from the routes uh, JavaScript that we have up here. Okay, and then finally, we're going to do app use. If it cannot find a route, we want it to uh, cancel out and show a 404. So let's do response um, next. And inside of this, we want it to display a 404. So we're just going to do a response.render and uh, eventually we'll create a pages slash 404 and let's just go ahead and pass in a title for this as well so let's do title 404 okay so bring this down a little bit okay so now this is basically if the route doesn't exist we're going to render a 404 so inside of here we can create a new page called 404.ejs and we'll style it in just a second but we're just gonna say it's a 404 right now and then finally we want the server to spin up so we're gonna do app.listen we're gonna be listening on this port we're not gonna be passing anything to it 
Um, but then whenever the, uh, the server is running, we want it to log out something so it's not just showing a blank window down here. It'll actually show something. Um, so let's use this. Uh, let's see, user application listening at HTTP colon slash slash. And this is going to be uh, host name port port. Okay, so now if we come up here and we run, uh, what was the command? Um, I think it was npm run supervisor. Yeah, that should be it. Uh, it seems there's a module not found. So what is the module that it cannot find? Cannot find module routes. Uh, express equals require express. Okay, so well that is because uh, we didn't put anything inside of our routes. So let's just do a new file in here. Let's just call it index.js. And inside of this, let's just create um, a route structure. So let's do um, so constant express equals require express router equals express dot router and then in here we're going to do router dot get um, slash request response and we're just going to do response dot render pages index and then let's just do title home all right so now we have our single route defined we need to come down here and do module dot exports equal router okay so let's go ahead and do pages new file um, index.ejs and say this is the home okay so now let's try to run this again okay so let me cancel out of this um, and see what the issue is. Path is not defined. Oh, uh, server.js. We have path here. I don't know why it did comma, but path uh, and path is not defined. So let's do constant path equals require path. All right. So now, fingers crossed, let's try it again. Once we get this thing set up, should be able to run pretty smooth. There we go. So now we have user application listening at this uh, this address, and it's linking to our index EJS. If we try to go to say test, it's going to show us our 404. So everything's working. Um, the issue was that I was using path.join to grab the views, um, but I wasn't actually defining what the path was, so it was causing it to break, um, which necessarily doesn't mean that we needed this. To be put in there this response render um, but you know it's good to have it in there anyway because we can test our home page all right so since we're already creating the home page let's go ahead and make it look nice so let's create HTML5 and we can use our partials folder to create things for this so let's create a new file let's call it header.ejs because we are using the Express JavaScript library. New file, footer.ejs. And let's also create a new file, nav.ejs. Okay, so I just label this one header so we can see it when we go to add it. Now, what's really cool about using this, um, uh, where is it? J uh, package JSON. So, what's really cool about using the EGS the body parser in the express library is the ability to add things into our um, files here that reference other folders. 
So let's say we want to take our entire head. And you know what, I'm gonna go ahead and just paste this in there so we can modify that in a minute. We can do this. So include, and these have to be um, specific references. So it has to be lined up. So right now we're inside of this pages folder. So we want to go back one folder and then go to our partials and look up the header. So we're going to do partials header. And then we're just going to close this tag out. Okay, so now if we refresh this, it says document now because now it is referencing this. Um, so let's go ahead and pass in some dynamic variables here. And this is a good way so you don't have to keep modifying specific parts of the page. We can just, you know, we want our header, our navigation, and our footer to be done a certain way. So um, instead of having to constantly go back and forth and modify multiple files, you can just do it quickly by doing an include statement. Okay, so we're passing the variable title. So we can just do title here and have it where it actually passes out the title of the page. So now it says home at the top. And let's just make it go a little bit more. So let's do sample express EJS and node application. And if we refresh that, now it says what we want it to in the title. So let's go ahead and add some style sheets. Um, so let me close this so you can see a little bit better. Um, I think I'm just going to do bootstrap. I know I added it into the, uh, uh, by installing it, but I'm thinking I'm just going to add it through the, the main example or documents. See how they have it here. So I'm just going to copy this. And let's just copy this. Yeah, that'll make it a little bit easier for us to get going with everything. Um, we don't have our own CSS, so we're not going to worry about that yet. Whenever we do generate our own CSS, we can just generate it then. Okay, so now our header is set up. So let's go back to our index.js, our EJS. And let's create something that goes inside of here. So let's do div um, container and then inside of this container we're going to copy this and we're going to have a nav as well so let's have our nav menu here and let's do div card div card body this is not going to be a pretty website I can tell you that immediately um, but it'll get the job done and let's just do something like this is the home page. And let's go ahead and include a footer. So nothing in here yet. Uh, we want to have the footer and the nav contained inside of the div because it's going to be the footer text instead of scripts. All right, so footer. So now if we come over here and refresh this, now we have a home page. It's using Bootstrap. Um, and let's just say on our footer, just do something like this. Uh, so copyright your company here. If we rush that, now we have our footers included. Uh, we can go ahead and add some navigation in once we get those pages created. So let's come on over here and we'll keep that one open for now. Let's get rid of these because we are not needing these. And we also don't need to do anything inside of our server JS right now. Okay, I think I'm gonna end it right there. So, so far we're able to create node um, to be able to install some modules to be able to create routes, as well as be able to start using EJS to do our templating, so our nav, footer, header, um, 
But I think that's going to be do it for this tutorial. Stay tuned for the next tutorial where we go into creating newer routes that incorporate like an API kind of thing that happens to hit a local JSON file and then probably finishing it off with hitting an external API that we can then pull data into our website. So uh, stay tuned for the next series. If you uh, caught this one, there is one right before it. So go ahead, go back and watch that one. So it's the first video series. So you kind of know where we get started at. Um, but thanks for watching. If you like this kind of video, you want to see more like it, give me a thumbs up. If you have any comments or questions about this tutorial, uh, leave me a comment in the comments below. I'll talk to you later.